Right, so there's only about a week left um, for people to put their votes in for the UK Blog Awards. So please make sure you put your vote in for us. Um, it's literally just a click of the button. There's no details taken, but uh, yeah, they, it, it closes at the end of the week. So yeah, please do that. As deep as the sea No matter how rough Things may come to be You and me We're family Sing home Hey long for the ride home Hey I'll stay by your side home Hey you'll always be Alright by me Yes you are So shopping is tricky at the best of times, but even more difficult when you're in a really busy anchorage. And the shop was even bigger because we've had so many guests on board, uh, back to back. And to add to that, there's day boats, tripper boats, moving all in and out of the boats at anchor. Some completely distracted with other things like phones and all sorts. We, we don't really encourage the kids to go swimming at all, really, because it's just there's too much going on, it's too dangerous. Yeah, so our good friends Dan and Sophia arrive, and Dan gets straight into the Ibiza vibe. Julie and Simon also joined us in the anchorage, and um, Julie helped me with my module two of my hairdressing training. So we headed off to get some more water. So we've got Dan talking in Spanish now because it's so much easier. Keep on two, in the inside. Is it, is it stern two? Uh. And Dan got stuck into some galley tasks. What's Dan made? We're just arriving in Mallorca. Really nice sail today. Kids got into their favourite sport of jumping off the boat. Uh, some needed a little bit more encouragement. <laughs> Ponza, which was um, kind of all right, it's not the prettiest, but it was the best um, angle to go from Ibiza. But now we're going to head um, east because there's some nicer beaches around there. The kids are really good now at finding activities 
activities to do under passage. Great with the boat moving as well, you're doing pretty good. They're doing excellent. Making a great wall of China. He built that all on his own. Mm. <laughs> What's well, a great wall of UN? <laughs> It was really nice of Dan to help us with a few maintenance jobs as well. Uh, yeah, this is a new anchor windless remote control. Fiddly wiring though. So we finally got on to fixing our anchor light. It was a job that was quite simple really at the beginning and then turned out to be quite complicated. Do you want to maybe try the, the deck light and the steamer light? I'll just check it. Yeah, they're both working. Ah. <laughs> just, just try the tricolour and the anchor light. It's a loose connection. The actual mount that it was on had kind of perished away, so it wasn't really holding very well. And while he was trying to change the light bulb, then part of the outer casing fell off into the water and that was the end of that. Oh, shit. <laughs> hey! The light, the red bit of the tricolour. Where'd it go? <laughs> we'll bring the whole unit down. Capped off the top of the uh, tricolour and anchor light, uh, a little bit of duct tape just to stop the water getting down there. Um, I'm going to try and replace that with uh, the LED one if we can. Um, and then I put a new block up here because at the moment we have to take the whole mainsail down before we can actually hoist anywhere at the mast. So I'm putting an extra halyard up here with a block so uh, we can just uh, go up on an independent halyard. That bang in you here is the, uh, the furler inside the in-mast furling. Um, so we need to get that on before we get any sleep tonight. Okay, time to go back down. tricolour and the anchor line. I made up once to check it and there was a loose connection but as I was checking it um, part of the tricolour came apart we lost it over the, over the side. It was an old halogen model anyway so we're going to try and replace it with the uh, LED unit instead um, but it just means we've got to go around for a few days without any um, anchor line. The water today is so clear because it, there's no wind at all so it's just still and you can see right down to the bottom it's about eight metres. <laughs> There's, um, there's no one anchored here because this is where the Pasadena is growing, but the wildlife is great. So we're having a look, aren't we, Ewan? We're investigating. And we saw a um, stingray. Yeah, we just saw a stingray, didn't we? And we followed it. Scared, are they? The little blackfish are just everywhere. We have to identify yeah, them. Yeah, I tried to chase one. You tried to chase one. Yeah. Right. Dam got on to some fishing. Um, I'm not sure whether um, the music session scared the fish away for him. He didn't catch anything. Wave goodbye, guys. So we're just trying to um, sort out the next year's 
uh, curriculum for the kids and trying to put it into some sort of timetable. We're not short on resources, what we're short on is time, I think, and the kids' ability to concentrate when we've got all this beautiful blue sea to go swimming in. Basically, the kids are just trying to squeeze in as much fun as they can have now before schooling starts again. I'm just trying to work out um, Rowan's English at the moment, so what she's going to do every day for English and how we're going to fit in language, grammar, spelling. So we've been starting on Tempest, so we thought we might carry on with that. As the summer ends, the weather deteriorates and then finding somewhere to anchor the boat that's sheltered and it's got a good holding all becomes more important. Well, my mum and dad, they couldn't anchor, but now they found a place to anchor and they're really happy, but there's lightning and rain. Supposed to do? Catch metal. Why? It will kill us, I think. Why? I don't know. Are you staying on the wood? I'm staying on the map. We've got a bit of a thunderstorm approaching and the wind's picking up and switching around, so uh, I'm just going to lay a bit more chain out. On a boat, your lifestyle is dictated by the weather, which can be really hard sometimes, but also it can be really awesome. They look like chocolate spreads. Oh, I burnt a bit of the wood. It's okay, it's Yeah. Boat schooling is kind of mixed with um, tasks on the boat, which includes navigation, or first aid and also lots of maintenance skills. Put your fingers, put it on, put it on, that's it. Put it on the wood, hold the rope with your other hand. Colonia de San Jordi. So then after a very busy summer, lots of people, lots of things happening, it's nice to go together on shore as a family and do some exploring. I think they're really cool, those bottlecks they have. Have you seen them? They've got the wall somewhere and it's self-serving bottlecks. Can we go back home now? And what's she doing? <laughs> Darry got a bit of sandcastle envy. So this is Mallorca and we're right opposite the island of Cabrera which is a nature reserve but one thing we've noticed here is that there is not a single bit of rubbish anywhere it is so clean even like the beach bits that go down to rocky outcrops it's just perfectly clean they're so careful about what they do with their rubbish and it's carefully recycled as well it's really really nice to see actually and it's made us kind of a bit redundant here <laughs> yeah that we can't even find three bits of plastic to pick up which is good it's a good thing <laughs> so it, we're heading back to Palma to pick Grandad up from Palma airport the weather's sort of um quite unstable the weather changes in a few minutes um but that is that is typical I think of this area it does it can take 15 minutes the weather can completely change okay, we're sailing into Palma now the wind changed and it's in our favor so we're having a nice sail and um, what we been, what have we been doing then on this trip uh, I've been writing blogs I've been 
reading. How many knots are we doing? We're doing 7.3 knots on all of our cells without any energy. Yo! So yeah, Palmer Bay, woo! So when we got to Palmer, we found a brilliant spot to anchor right in front of Palmer Cathedral. The only drag was it's quite a long way to get into shore. I've got a rock knot and it's our kind of anchor, but it's got like this ring thing here. Because with ones like these, if they land upside down, they just drag along. But if this one would uh, like land upside down, so after learning a few boat skills with anchoring, we headed off to explore Palmer. We found quite an unexpected exhibition. It was really good. It just showed how conservation and intervention can have a major positive effect on all the flora and fauna of our planet. It's really, really good, really worth a see. Then it was time to introduce the kids to tapas for the first time. So what Woody always says is your favorite food is out there, but you just haven't found it yet. They try a lot of different things as they travel around and they're much more open to trying different things now. So we came to this place, we thought we'd try a bit of tapas. You and me. You and what is that? What is that? Meatballs. Meatballs. I won't let me eat it. Why not? Which is me. Oh. Right, what's that, that there? What Bacon. is that? No. No, that's egg, egg, egg yolk. I think that's cheese, actually. With a sort of syrup, and that's some like kind of mango chutney. like French toast type thing, but it's Spanish. With and that, that'll be bruschetta and. Dad just cheese. ate a bit. It's like an orangey marmalade sauce. Dairy. Little bit on your plate, okay? We're not chimpanzees. Dad, what are you eating? I'm eating lettuce with a knife and fork. Yeah, I'm trying a tiny bit of everything. Right, what do you think? Tell me what you think so far. Something is biting me. You, have you tried your meatball yet? Mom, what is this? I can't cut it. Cheese? It like, it looks like goat's cheese to me. The um, meat is nice and tender and um, the sauce is really rich. Do you like, like the meatballs? The best meatballs. Everything fine here? Perfect. First tapas experience. The meatballs were the best meatballs I've had. Mm -hmm. Meatball, those meatballs are better than I care. No. That's yeah. big claim. So Palmer is really quite a vibrant and bohemian artistic kind of city. Um, I remember getting my first job here in the boatyard and hanging out in these lanes in the tapas bars in the evenings. There's hardly a scrap of rubbish on the floor but there's graffiti everywhere. It's really weird. It's kind of like a contradiction. What does it mean? 
I love the way you come to these streets and you never know what's around the next corner. They remind me of London. Yeah! They're pretty. What's around the next corner? Yeah, what about Ta-da! Ta-da! So because today my daughter told me that she wants a real teacher that knows what they're doing, I've kind of got even more pressure to make sure that I'm ready for her tomorrow to teach her maths. So it's kind of 11 o'clock at night and um, I'm doing gradients. Y equals MX add C. And um, I'm trying to make sure that I can get like one step ahead. I don't remember doing this at all at school. so. I'm kind of doing it in the evenings. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna be so ready tomorrow. Yeah, don't feel sorry for me, I'm quite enjoying it. I'm gonna move these X's out the way and to leave it with Y. And um, I think I'm doing it right, but I'm not sure. So any tips that you have on um, doing these equations and how you work out the gradient from an equation where the X and Y is on the same side, then please send me your tips. I'd love to have a teacher as well, actually. <laughs> Christmas cards made by me and my sister in 1975. So Grandad came out and this time he brought some letters dating back from the war. So the kids are fascinated in their family history. So I actually think they're really lucky to have a Grandad who can bring these things out and tell these stories and it just becomes part of their history lesson. It's brilliant. July the 9th, 1944. Dear Mrs Wood, not all the songs of Solomon, sung by a first-class chorus of smug-faced exultant angels, could adequately express the congratulations you deserve for producing a most truly wonderful, according to his papa's report, baby Ritson. <laughs> <laughs> we are very pleased to know all was well with you and are looking forward to making the acquaintance of your grand new son. We leave Palmer finally and start heading west. What do you think about that rig, Woody? Uh, it's either a stroke of genius or uh, the work of a madman. We've come to um, Palma Nova, Palma Nova, and um, we know that there's an Aldi here and a Lidl. So on our exotic circumnavigation, we hunt out Lidls and Aldis because we need a massive stock up because we've had lots of people and we've run out of all our dry products. So we wanted to go somewhere where we can get as close as possible to the beach and um, the kids can play uh, and it's easy to come back and forth on the dinghy. So uh, that's why we're here. So we headed off and did some shopping. So on our trip today into shore, we found second-hand shops. Yeah, sure. And you don't often get second-hand shops in Europe at all, really. You didn't get any in Greece and nowhere else, but we found some here in Spain. I think it's run by the Lions um, charity and um, by some lovely expats. The kids read all the time and we can't get the books very easily, apart from on the Kindle, but the Kindle is quite expensive. But the exciting thing about it was that um, we got the whole set of the Michael Mapergo books. Six euros for that. And we got the whole works of Shakespeare. Not the whole works, but a load of Shakespeare books. We got two Timmy Faley books, they're always brand new. Three euros for that lot. We probably have more books in this boat than anything else. That's what keeps us going. Now, what does keep, what keeps Woody going? Woody got these in the second hand shop. He got himself. Actually, you could talk about that, Woody. What did you get? Some beer glasses. Oh, they look posh. Mm, so everyone's happy. This was That's nice. three pounds. Gorgeous. I like the beads at the top. Yeah. I also got this more colourful orange dress. Uh, this was four pounds. Yeah. I also got this um, uh, UV top. UV. Good morning. So we. Um, have just left the massive Bay of Palma and we're going to start heading around. We're going to try and get to Soler on the west coast. 
there's a small weather window we might be able to make but um, yeah yesterday we had a nice afternoon with a couple of other long-term liverboard cruisers Lynn and Andy hi nice to see them meet them and um, great fun on the catamaran the kids had great fun jumping off their roof um, and then that evening we came down to a bay just on the tip um, called Cala Figuera, which is a very deep bay, but it was perfect just for a, an overnight stop. And now we've hopped round the corner, now that the wind's on our, in our favour, and we're heading to um, Cala Ponza to fill up on water and fuel as well, probably, before we try and go around the west coast. So that's our mission, really, before there's a massive maestral, or they call it Tramantora, which is coming down on Sunday. So we kind of need to get into Soler before then to get some shelter. We're in Santa Ponza, we're trying to get water because we wanted to go around the west coast but um, it's very busy so you get three minutes um, and you get 45 litres but um, we're trying to squeeze in as much water as we can before we get evicted from this pontoon. It's too hot. So this is another t-shirt we need to have. And so our journey continues west. This is Kalamada, Kalamara, Kal Kala? This is Kalamara, and uh, it's a really nice beach because the sand's really soft. It's got a bridge. <laughs> So Cala de Mar is also another popular holiday destination. Yeah. So of course we got into the holiday groove and that always involves getting an ice cream. Gracias. So the next pump that's gone is the water pump. So we've got the water pumps broken, we're using our emergency water to wash up. The manual bilge pump's broken, and the toilet, one of the toilet pumps kind of going. Waiting for the battery charge to come back. We think we've found a replacement for the masthead light. Um, oh, we're also nice. waiting for the water pump to arrive. Yeah, it's a bit of a drag, because um, while we have water in our tank, um, we can't get it. So yeah, it's a bit like camping, but without the running water or the tent. Right, we've um, decided not to go to Solaire in the end because there's no options there. There's only one port and that's it. And if there's no space or there's not a good holding, um, you know, there's no, we'd have to go six hours back again. So we thought we'd rather wait when there's fair winds. So we just come around the corner in the end after all that with the water. And um, we found this nice place it looks obviously quite popular because we're surrounded by super yachts and um, crack on with the homeschooling in the morning, swimming in the afternoon, nice sun all day, what more could you want? So we still really wanted to get to Solier. Um, so the, way, the other way of doing it really is you go into Palma, which is what we did, and you catch the wonderful train that goes from Palma through the mountains up to Solaire. We're um, in Palma and we're getting this old train to Solaire. We've skipped trying to get there on the boat at the moment. It's got 100 years of history and um, we're going to go through the mountains. Really exciting. And we also know that Grandad really likes train journeys, so he was very happy. It was built so they could transport stuff to Solo, because Solo is right on the other side of the mountain pass. And it was also used to transport various um, ammunition to the submarine base, which was over the mountains as well. A long time ago, I remember um, trekking these mountains with my friend Claire. We went from Porto Palenza to Solaire. And the first night we stayed in a monastery, and the second night we stayed in a kind of youth hostel. And 
we had, I remember like some wine and some olives, some bread and cheese, that was it really. But it was good, good times. And we're off. When we arrived in Solaire town, which is kind of up in the mountains, it's before you get to the port, we found it a really nice place actually. It was quite chilled out and we found a nice little restaurant to have lunch. So we did tapas again and also a sneaky jug of sangria. So when you get to Solaire, you can get a tram down to the port, but we decided not to get that tram, but would walk it instead. Yeah, it was quite a long walk, but we did find some interesting places on the way. As Woody always says, what do you always say? If we, if we don't, if we have water and we have our engine on, how do we move the engine? Can you go on that side with them? The boat's leaning that way. The elements of the periodic table. There's a hydrogen and helium and lithium and helium 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 Travel on to unknown destinies, but you and me will still be family. So thanks again for watching our videos, thanks for sharing them, thanks for liking them, and also thanks for clicking the notification button so that you get notified when they're going to come out. Um, thanks very much to our patrons, of course, um, for making these videos happen. Also, just a final reminder is to please vote for us for the UK Blog Awards. There's only a week left, just one click and it's done. Thanks a lot, until the next blog. Thank you. And if you want to do it, do it.